the idea of defining for yourself when you are in plain air, like um, these places, the uh, Great Falls, your last group, um, uh, making a conscious effort to say what you're thinking and why. Um, you know, if you're on your own, um, you know, you're making your choices here. You're just saying, I'm going to look at that crevasse or that cascading waterfall or those reflections in the um, canal or whatever, whatever you're doing. Um, articulate what you're doing and why and say, you know, I'm looking at this, say, um, which it looked like one that a lot of people um, were looking down on. I guess it was the the view du jour. <laughs> Once we got to the end of that long hike, we had to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> to rest, to be back. But, um, but clearly, I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, this is an awesome site anyway, you know, Great Falls. It's, it's, it's nature, nature to the nail, raw. And um, so when you get to a thing like that, um, one, you're making a choice, but then two, um, you don't have to be, uh, you know, overly conscious about this um, self-conscious, but the idea of, of articulating what you are defining, um, you know, the feeling of water rushing, um, the vastness of it, um, the, uh, the hard, craggy rock against liquid, um, th different things that if you, if you use the words in your head or uh, in any way, I maintain that it is helpful in how you are interpreting it and how you um, put your next, your paint on paper because you, it's like framing, it's like taking a picture of it, that you're already um, sent, here's my choice and it's because of these things and then when you're painting, you want to get that back into your paint, um, you know, whether it's cascade, or light, or shadow, whatever. Um, the use of shadows, um, exploiting shadow patterns, we find both for a quality of atmosphere, time, temperature, and also for, importantly, the connectors they provide, how they connect a figure to the grasses, a tree, how it, how it joins things and becomes a little motif. Um, and then the other thing is be aware of your viewpoint, how you enter the scene, how you might use certain framing devices. Uh, Paul Signac said this of Cezanne, paper barely covered with 20 touches of watercolor, 20 certainties, 20 victories. I, mean, I think that's just a brilliant, beautiful movement uh, of farmer's market. Um, and you can just go for it, pick, pick your view, pick your focus, pick how do you enter it. Uh, all these things that I just said about plan air. Uh, this is a plan air market here. So, so when you make, you're making that choice, just as if you were at Great Falls or wherever, how do I get into that? How do I pull myself and then thereby my, uh, say, reader, see, I'm really thinking of words, my reader, my viewer, in there. It could be by narrowing your focus, it could be by destroying the format that's there and, you know, doing your sensation, which is another sort of word and word and paint thing. Whatever way, there you are. So I, I just made myself a little task. I have no idea why I had this photograph, but I did. It's a apple blossoms, I think. And I just set a little task to myself to do it sort of three ways. And I first did a fairly complete drawing, and if you want, call it more most conventionally. I mean, I did it kind of contour, but complete. I planned it onto the paper. And then I very much sprang off of the colors I saw and um, trying to get the light service. And not be, as I did it, I, I realized what I was doing. I didn't really, at first, have everything in my head. I just thought I was plodding along. And I 
that was my first thing. And then I started getting interested. It took me a little while, you know, sir, baby steps. Um, and I thought, okay, what I'm really going to do is just treat everything. I'm not thinking that this is an apple blossom. So then I said, I began to get interested and into a different aspect, which was these are shapes. There are shapes and spaces, and I'm going to just treat everything as never mind what it really is, but just go between shape and space, shape and space, shape and space. And some of them are magically going to emerge as apple, fruit tree. Uh, and by doing that, the first thing that happened was, in a sense, it became more abstract. Um, and it could become that in itself. I could say, you know what? Fine, I'm just going to do that. But I'm being very responsible, as I was in here, to the light and dark, the values, and somewhat to the color changes. Then uh, I said, I'm just going to do it a value study with just two blues. I was having these blues. Um, I, I was having a lot of fun out probably all of you get these Daniel Smith, you know, what do they call it? Color oh, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, comparison things. Um, so I just went into uh, just doing it in uh, one essentially one color, different views of I mean different uh, colors of the same color. Um, and that made me really think about the values and as well as I could. And I, got, I was less interested in this. That did not work to me, actually. Uh, and that's a very, uh, yeah, for some people, too, everyone is so different about this. And value, value and color can be interchanged. Which are you doing? Is it value? Is it color? Hello. I think it's the same thing. Um, how you can do it. Um, so anyway, it was making me see what was important. And I was also playing with slow and fast. And the second one was the fastest. Uh, and I, I just, would, I kept just, you know, small and go to another one, um, referring to the photograph. But it's unimportant in a sense whether this is space between petals or a leaf behind petals or whatever. It is. It's shapes and it's contrast that buttresses what's going on. So, and then this one I just sort of did at the end, trying to just be looser, and I felt that I benefited from that whole voyage. I uh, did a contour thing of one of these from one of these photographs, and um, it's it's the sort of the same idea. I just I try to hurl myself into. Um, not, not thinking so much whether these were uh, sunflowers or what, but to try to, back to words, words in picture, back to what my feeling, my sensation was. So when I did that, um, I found that very interesting. And it got me, um, I felt, it got me off the ground. For instance, here is a really weird congested area, uh, which is the kind of thing you find everywhere in nature, in farmer's market, whatever. I hate that when it's not defined. <laughs> and it's not defined in our ghetto. So it can be very, and actually, there's no reason one could arrive at great, great firmness of shape and everything. But what I started with was, as with this, um, um, started with just trying to just find find the I did the contour drawing so there's there's a little map here um, your greens are gorgeous well that's because I lost myself yes oh. and I, I'm gonna try and lose myself so if you can lose yourself um, in this and I and I and I was keeping this this thing that I've been talking about in words I was trying to keep this idea of Congestion and, and growth. Yes. And, I mean, switch to this. this one I loved um, uh, because it it can be just a, a hint or put back into something, 
and it will provide this light. I mean, you can use it as its poison self. Uh, you know, everybody's <laughs> style is different. Um, but I am, um, I'm, I'm using some of it, you know, trying to get this. And as I'm doing this, um, the other thing I wanted to point out is brush. Um, this is a very loopy, it, it, it's made me um, uh, be more, not sumier, I don't want to claim that, Mike, but um, uh, I, I, it's making me use it like this and just further sort of back. Yes. Holding it further back. Yeah. Holding it further back yeah. and exploiting it. It has a wonderful, lovely tip. Um, as I said, artist, watercolor, sable, Windsor Newton, 12. Uh, water, water, the importance of water and how you are um, uh, watching the drying time so that if there are places that you want to go back into here, you're consciously and or unconsciously letting some of it dry. So you're going to get either a nice bleeding edge or uh, a hard edge or a hard-ish edge, you know, the whole degrees. Um, the, and back to my thing about, um, about the exercise and just trying to see space um, thing. I am not really thinking about um, exactly what I'm doing right now so much. I'm not saying sunflower with stem or whatever. I'm trying to get my reaction to it. Um, so in I go with a few little things and so your very wet brush is that transporting the pigment all over. The place. Yes and um, I probably would Um, this is alizarin crimson here. Um, not that it matters, but uh, I'm trying to neutralize this um, green, but dragging a little of the informing green down uh, into this woody, uh, un unleafed part of the All the time I'm lo looking at what the water can do and half the time letting it do it and not. Um, things can be amended, wiped out, whatever. I'm just trying to get the uh, placement. And I'm not going to do much here with this. Um, red and green are compliments. This is showing the miracles of letting the water do the work. Uh, and you can do that to different degrees. It, this complement, the red, I put in, um, is pushing this kind of poison green and expressing its quality of the yellow light. It's, it's almost as though it's physically um, you know, manipulating those granules so that you're getting a, a fascinating uh, feeling of it may not even be in there. Actually, it is. It is there. See? It does it all by itself. Um, so I'm just going to not even touch that because I kind of like it. I'm going to, I believe it or not, I'm um, I'm being conscious of this um, degree of drying to get back in here to do a little bit more of the congested feeling that 